Hello everyone, Mark here, Mark's Max Muscle, and congratulations goes out to Joel Thomas. He won the 2021 Toronto Pro, the Super Show, Toronto Super Show. Anyway guys, he is headed towards the Olympia. He earned himself a ticket towards the 2022 Mr. Olympia event. Now in this video, I will go over the top three placers in the 212 division, the Classic Physique division, and then we will look at several of the women's divisions, including the Open, the uh, women's physique, the figure, the wellness, and then the bikini. And then afterwards, guys, we are going to do a picture comparison between Joel Thomas and this guy, Quinton Uriah, otherwise known as Quint Beastwood. He placed second, and in my opinion, well, I'll give you guys my opinions on that. This is just a simple review, first of all, of this event, and then I will do a picture comparison between Joel Thomas and Quentin Uriah because it was close guys Joe Seaman the Seaman man I like this guy he plays third continues to improve and let's hope for a for a showing of some Seaman at the uh, you know a future Olympia maybe the 2022 Olympia you never know let's go over to the 212 division it was Douglas Connor that took the big win guys good physique on him Look at that V taper. It was Adolphus Quota. I apologize if I get his name incorrectly. That took second. Good physique on him as well. And look, guys, David Henry. David Henry took third. He's still competing, man. That's you know. I've been following this guy for years. He used to compete in the open class when there was no two twelve. Go over to the classic physique division, and it was Anthony Casado that took the big win here. With Romain Ramasama, Ramasami taking second place with Ramon Hey took third. That's his last name. Hey, it's H-A-Y-E. Let us go over and take a look at the beauty of the IFBB, the women's divisions. Beginning with the open class, Mela Ash gets a big win here. And for two years in a row, goes to the... The Olympia event, she took 11th, so let us hope for a higher place at the 2022 show for Mela Ash. Lisa Coudre takes second place, and it was Michelle Yin that takes third. Look at the calves on Michelle. Wow. Beautiful, beautiful women. Let us go over to the women's physique. And now when I say next step down, these are, this is the next step down as far as muscle size things of that nature, maybe even perhaps conditioning, but you wouldn't be able to tell that by your winner in this women's physique division, Ivy Reen, and she placed seventh at the 2021 Olympia, so she gets another shot at that title, the 2022 show. Alexis Sullivan takes second place, a beauty, a beautiful woman here, I follow her on Instagram, and Lisa McLean, she takes third. All of these women, all of these women, they get more and more beautiful. But then you look at the first girl again, and she's just as beautiful. But anyway, let us go over to figure. And it was Angel Angelita Lopez, another beautiful uh, young lady here. I like this division as well. You know, they don't have the, the huge muscle of the open class, but pretty much close to the physique. And it was Maryam Bamdad. I might have mispronounced her name, but she's also a beautiful young woman here. She takes second place. Katarina Anino. Anina. Uh, and again, some of these names, a little bit harder for me to pronounce. Let's take a look at the wellness division. This is rapidly becoming one of my favorite female divisions as well. Cassandra Gillis. I've been following this young woman for quite a while. Canadian bombshell. What a beauty she is. What a beauty she is. She takes first and another trip to the Olympia. She placed 11th, much like Mela Ash in her division in the wellness. Cassandra Gillies gets another shot at the Olympia to improve on that 11th place finish. Celeste Morales takes second and Emily Azzarello gets third for the wellness. And three beautiful young women, I have to say. And then we go over to the bikini. Last but not least, rapidly becoming one of my favorite divisions. Anyway, Danielle Phelps takes first and in second place. It was Adair Librec. Librette. I apologize, some of these last names. 
very difficult to pronounce, unless you know how they are pronounced. Karen Wall, I'm sure I got that one correctly, and she places third, and that is the review, the 2021 Toronto Super Show, the Toronto Pro. I suppose you could call it a, a recap more than a review. Anyway, let us go on to different business here. The Men's Open, one and two. Quentin Uriah, Joel Thomas, and I will, I'll put a little timestamp in the comment section or in the, you know, the description. So you, those of you who are just interested in this one, just click on that and go right to this matchup. In my opinion, Quentin Uriah was so superior as far as the, the structure, the aesthetics, the flow, that it was going to take some heavy muscle for Joel Thomas, some heavy domination in the conditioning department from from Joel Thomas to defeat Quinton. And I just don't see that. Now you could say he's out muscling him. Yeah, I don't know. Arguable in the arms, but everywhere else, lats, legs, wheels. Quinton looks like he's winning on that aspect. Look at the muscle separation. Both ha men have tremendous calves. But make no mistake about it, guys. Quinton Uriah, Quint Beastwood, he is winning this front double bicep shot. In my opinion, that is. But of course, much like any bodybuilding competition, you can't judge one based on a single shot. Now the front lat spread, unfortunately there was no good clear shots. But you could see from that front double that the conditioning was not really overwhelming, if, if anything, for Joel Thomas. If anything... Uh, Quentin Uriah looked like he might have had better separation, at least in the quads. And as far as the structure is concerned... Now, I, this is not a, a hate Joel Thomas video. I just really like Quentin Uriah's physique. Hey, I like the guy, too. I don't, I don't dislike Joel, either. But physique-wise, I really like Quentin Uriah in this matchup. I, I will give Joel this one here. His lats are filled out a little bit more than Quentin, but my soul, my soul, it's not a domination when you look at the, the structure, the aesthetics, the flow, but this is a rusty old screenshot, you can't tell conditioning. Turn to the side here. Now I can hear some people argue and say, well, Joel's more compact, he's more muscularly built, like an open class competitor. And I can hear some, almost hear some people, oh, Quinton could go to another division, could go to Classic. No, no, no. Why? Why? <laughs> anyway, I see a bright future for Quinton Uriah. And I also see him winning this side chest shot. Yes, he's a little bit thinner up in the upper body. As far as the arms, maybe. Good size bicep, triceps though. I mean, hey, he's no Tinkerbell. But when you look at the wheels, my opinion... And this is not meant to, you know, say Joel Thomas is no good. It just appears that Quentin Uriah is in superior condition. So if it's a condition uh, question, con uh, Quentin looks like he's in better. If anything, if anybody's in condition. Look at the quad separation, hamstring, little smooth on the part of Joel Thomas. With all due respect, same thing in the side tricep. Look at the size of Quentin Uriah. Much taller, as you can see from that front lot spread. The guy is a beast. Six foot plus. And conditioned. Much more conditioned here from the side than Joel Thomas. So, hmm. Hmm. My opinion, guys, this was maybe a, a slight robbery. But, like, I guess you can't tell from uh, four shots either. Lest you turn around and look at the back development. Now, unfortunately, oh, wait, hold on a second before you click away. Unfortunately, we don't have a rear lat spread, but we do have a clear rear double that we can check conditioning. But let's just say for a second that conditioning was similar. Say it was even the exact same. So we're going to rate uh, physique for physique. Joel looks good. He's got a good solid V taper. He's not as, I don't want to call uh, Quentin lanky, but uh, let's face it, he's not as compact. He's not as thick and muscular in this shot 
as Joel Thomas. So maybe it was a back issue. Maybe it was Quinton lost both of the back shots. And I guess we haven't seen the rest of the shots either. I guess there's there's two more shots. So before I get myself all worked up into a, a hissy fit, got to check all of these shots, give it a proper review. But hey, at the end of the day, if I still believe that Quinton Uri is the winner, I will I will say that, you know. And now, look at the clear shots of the back development. Now, what we're expecting to see here is a dominance in condition, glutes, hamstrings, back for Joel Thomas in order for him to get the win, correct? That's not what I see. You know what I see? I'll tell you what I see. I see a much more conditioned Quinton Uriah here. No, I'm not speaking loose. Look at the hamstrings. Look at the glutes. The guy is much more conditioned than Joel Thomas. The back development is much more pleasing. Filled out better in the lats. A little uneven. A little unsymmetrical. For uh, Joel Thomas, I have to say, arms much more pronounced for Quinton. Winning in the calves as well. Although Joel has good calves. I'll give him that. And it's hard, guys. It's hard for me not to sound that I'm... Like, I'm upset with Joel Thomas. I'm not upset. I'm upset because Quentin Uriah. Like I said, it's not a hate Joel Thomas. It's a like Quentin Uriah video. I believe that he should have won this matchup. Looking at this. Looking at the conditioning. And the rear lat would have been the same, guys. The rear lat would have been the same. Sure, Joel is better, wider, things of that nature. But conditioned? No. Quentin Uriah, guys, in my opinion. Turn back around, abs and thigh. Joel Thomas has a fantastic uh, shot here, for sure. Good V taper, good set of abs, good set of abs. Now, you would expect Joel being a much shorter, structurally speaking, dude, you'd expect him to be thicker in the quads. You know what I'm saying? A lot of the taller guys, harder to fill out those big long quads. <laughs> I mean, Quinton looks, you know, not only more separated in that area, that's close, that's close, you know, Joel's pretty good, but I, I would still say Quentin more separated, and he has a bigger set of legs, and much longer, so, it, you know, kind of a, a dwarfing type situation here, but having said that, pretty good shot for Joel Thomas, I must say, one of his best, really, one of his best, and as is Quentin Uriah, when you look at his repertoire of shots, his abs and thigh sticks out as one of the more aesthetically pleasing and a lot of the taller guys don't have a filled out quad. They look a little leaner in that a aspect. Not Quentin. He's actually dominant as far as the size of the quads are concerned. Go to the most muscular. The last word, the last say on this. And this is a pretty good argument for Joel Thomas fans. He is much more built like a open class bodybuilder as far as the thickness. He's going down very low here. He looks good everywhere. Look at the calves. My soul. He's holding his leg forward, you know. Making his calves look even thicker, maybe. I don't know. He wasn't winning on that aspect in most of the shots, but surely he is here. Surely. Anyway, like I said, great argument for uh, Joel Thomas to get the win here. But then you look at this type of most muscular, and this is Quinton's shot. This is his type of most muscular. Not the crab. Much like a uh, God rest his soul, Sean Roden, he was no good at the crab position. When you compare it with a shot like this for Roden, was great too. You know what I'm saying? In my opinion, you can kind of write off that win that uh, Joel got, that uh, Joel obtained in that crab position. Because I mean, if Quinton's winning in this one, which I think that he clearly is, good feathering in the quads there. For Joel Thomas, Ex excellent structure. You know, maybe the judges don't like the longer structures. I do. I'm a fan of the 70s bodybuilders, your Arnolds, your Dave Drapers, your taller guys, Serge Nebrais. He was six foot plus as well. Anyway, guys, in my opinion, Quentin Uriah would have won this one if I was a judge, which I'm not. But that's just my opinion. That's my two cents. Taking nothing away from the 2021 Toronto Pro champion, Joel Thomas. 
should have been Quentin Uriah. That's that's my opinion though. And that's why we have these channels to give our opinions. And the review was Joel Thomas is your champion with a little bit of a, you know, epithet there. And Quentin Uriah maybe should have won. <laughs> Hit thumbs up on the video. I'm not looking for haters, guys. I'm looking for uh you Quentin Uriah fans to support him even more and make it undeniable next time. Undeniable. Have a great day, guys.